Hey, it's Mr. Lonesky with Unit 7, Section 2. We're talking about trig ratios today. So what do we use trig ratios for? Uh, if we're given a right triangle and we only have an angle and a side, we can use trig ratios to help us find other missing sides. In other words, we can't really use Pythagorean theorem. We need to use um, some other means to find these uh, angles or sides. Um, so the angle that I'm referring to is called a reference angle. Um, and when we are trying to figure out which trig ratio to use, we need to look at our triangle and then label uh, the following sides as opposite and uh, adjacent that is sort of in coordinates with our reference angle. Um, so in an example here, we have triangle ABC. Um, if A is our reference angle, you always want to put a little mark um, to indicate that that's your reference angle. So sometimes just a little arch is fine. Um, so we are talking about opposite. So if you recall, we had talked about opposite before being the side that you can sort of connect to angle A um, or draw a line across to. So side BC is the opposite. Um, and then the adjacent side is the side that sort of lays flat um, near the angle. And so that is going to be our adjacent side, ADJ. And then the third side is always the hypotenuse. So um, a lot of students struggle with which one the adjacent is, so I always recommend first labeling what the hypotenuse is. Remember, hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degrees, um, and then opposite is the one that's opposite our given angle. So that's sort of how we would label our triangle there. Well, what if I had the same triangle, but I used B as the reference angle? So maybe where I'm standing or the coordinates uh, require me to be at angle B. So the hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse, right? It's still across from the 90 degree angle, it didn't change. But now the only thing that's gonna switch around here is now side AC, that is now opposite angle B, and then side BC now becomes the adjacent. Um, so really the only thing is when I move the reference angle, the opposite and the adjacent switch places. But the hypotenuse always stays the same. Um, when you're picking your reference angle, you're never going to pick the right angle to be your reference angle. Um, so, moving on talking about these trig ratios, what exactly is a trig ratio? A trig ratio is a comparison of two sides um, of a right triangle. And there are three basic trig ratios that we're going to look at. They are called sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, on the calculator, you see them written like this. Um, it kind of looks like sin, um, cos, and tan. But we really don't say that. We say still say sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, so for all right triangles, the following uh, trig ratios are true. So let's just say we had some given reference angle, angle A. Um, we would say that the sine of angle A is equivalent to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine of A is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent of A is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. An easy way to remember this is the phrase so ka toa. Um, so so tells us sine opposite hypotenuse, ka tells us cosine adjacent hypotenuse, and tangent tells us, uh, or to, I'm sorry, toa tells us tangent opposite adjacent. Um, so here's an example of just setting up these ratios. What would they look like? Um, so if I had asked, what is the sine of angle A? So angle A is our reference angle right here. Um, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And so I always recommend when you get to these problems, first thing, mark your reference angle. Second thing, always label your sides. So this would be opposite, this would be hypotenuse. Oh, look at me. I don't even need to write that stuff. I was nice and typed it for you. So yeah, so this would be the opposite, this would be the hypotenuse, this would be the adjacent. So if sine of A is opposite over the hypotenuse, uh, opposite is associated with five feet, hypotenuse is associated with 13. So that would be five divided by 13, or five over 13. Um, cosine of A is, um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so adjacent is 12, hypotenuse is 13, so that would be equivalent to 12 over 13. You can just leave them like fractions, because um, again, we're talking about a ratio. So a ratio, we always have sort of a comparison. Um, so what happens if I switch my reference angle? So now I don't want angle A as my reference angle. Now I want angle B. So let's say 
um, I was using angle B, so remember what that does. That keeps the hypotenuse the same. So 13 is still associated with the hypotenuse, but now the opposite and the adjacent switch. So now 12 is that opposite side and five would be the adjacent. Whoops. Um, and so here, sine of B, well sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be 12 over 13. Tangent of B, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so opposite is 12, adjacent is five. So you would say 12 over five. So this is just setting up the trig ratios. Um, so the next example here is just another example problem for you to try out in setting up these trig ratios. Um, three problems where A is your reference angle, three problems where B is your reference angle. Try that out on your own, see how you do. All right, let's take a look at how we can actually solve for stuff using the trig ratio. And you are going to need a calculator for this part. There's really no other way of doing it without a calculator. Um, a big important thing here is that your calculator has to be in degree mode. Um, if you're using one of our TI calculators, the 84s that we have in class, um, this is going to be an important part. But if you're using your cell phone calculator or if you're using one of the smaller uh, scientific calculators, this is something you don't have to worry about. Um, it's sort of always in degree mode. Um, so to check to see if it's in degree mode on the TI calculator, um, what you want to do is hit the mode button right here um, and then you want to scroll down to where it says radian and degree and then you're going to move that over to degree hit enter and then you can hit second and the mode button and that will sort of exit out of here so now we're in degree mode and even if you look at the top of the calculator uh, it should say degree or radian so if it says radian switch it over to degree mode okay so um, looking at this problem, what we're going to do is uh, we're given an angle. So that angle that we're always given, that's our reference angle. Um, yeah, we can figure out what this missing angle is here, but it's always better to just work with what you're given. Um, so this is our reference angle. And so as always, we want to label our sides as um, opposite adjacent hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is opposite 90 degrees. Here's my reference angle. So that means this is opposite. And then adjacent is the side that's left blank. Um, so now we want to solve for y. So we're dealing with something in the opposite, and we're dealing with something in the hypotenuse. So don't forget our little phrase here, so katoa. Um, that's whoa. Um, that's going to kind of help us out in terms of uh, solving for these problems. I don't know what's going on here. Sorry about that, technical difficulties. Uh, so Katoa here, sorry. Um, so seven's our reference angle. We're dealing with the opposite and the hypotenuse. So the way that we write this is sine of the reference angle. So the reference angle here is seven. So we'll say sine of seven is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And so the opposite is y, the hypotenuse is five. So now before you run to your calculator and you're like, ah, let me type this in, the idea is that we have to isolate the y. And this sine of seven, these things are attached to each other. You can't just be like, oh, subtract or add seven. That's one term and it's, it's attached together. You can't sort of move the seven without moving the sign with it. So the idea is if I wanna get y by itself, I'm just going to multiply both sides by five here. Um, and what that does, that'll cancel the fives out here. So now on the left side of my equation, I have five times sine seven equals y. And so now here's where you jump to your calculator. And on our calculators, we can hit five times sine, and our sine button's right here, of seven. And then when we hit enter, that will give us um, our answer. And so our answer there is about 0.6. We can maybe say 0.6 or 0.61. Directions say around to the 10th. So we'll just say 0.6. So y equals 0 0.6. All right, so for the next problem, we want to solve for x. So here's uh, the angle that's given to us. That will be our reference angle. So x is in the spot of the hypotenuse. Whoops. Um, and then this would be the adjacent. So this is the opposite, 
and then 20 is where the adjacent is. So we're dealing with adjacent and hypotenuse, which is cosine. Um, and so we're going to set this up as cosine of 58 is equal to adjacent divided by hypot or I'm sorry, adjacent divided by hypotenuse. 20 divided by x. Um, and so when we have this, it's a little bit different from our last problem. Notice the variables in the denominator. So anytime the variable is in the denominator, as sort of a little hint, um, we can take the variable. Ooh, I don't like green. Let's pick a different color. Um, we can take the variable and we can take the trig thing, sort of the trig function, um, and switch them. So remember, that cosine 58 is attached together. We can't just move the 58 or move the cosine. We have to move them together. Um, and so when I switch places with that, that's going to become x equals 20 divided by cosine 58. And really what we're doing is we're multiplying both sides by x and then dividing both sides by cosine 58. But sometimes it's easier to just be like, hey, they switched. Um, so now again, don't run to the calculator right away. The idea is isolate the variable first and then jump to the calculator. So now on the calculator, we're going to do 20 divided by cosine of 58. So on my calculator, we'll do 20 divided by cosine of 58. When we hit enter, we get 37.7. So that will be our answer for x. x equals 37.7. And again, what we're finding is the measure of that side length. All right, um, so let's take a look at these two problems here. It says solve for angle F, round to the nearest tenth. So this problem's a little bit different. Instead of solving for a side length, we're solving for an angle. And so as a big um, sort of those are the two types of problems that we're going to have. We're either going to solve for an angle or solve for a side. So if you are solving for an angle, instead of using the trig um, ratios, you're going to use what are called the inverse trig. Whoops, that's an R. Um, inverse trig ratio. So anytime you're solving for an angle, always think to yourself, inverse trig. Um, so we want to solve for angle F. So angle F is still our reference angle, but we don't know what it is. Um, and so we're still going to set up like we always do. So this is our hypotenuse. Um, this is the opposite. This is the adjacent. We're still going to be using SOHCAHTOA. Um, and so from angle F, we're dealing with opposite and adjacent. So we are going to use tangent. So here we would say tangent of angle F equals opposite over adjacent equals 4 over 6. So the idea is, earlier I said these two things are sort of locked together. So it's almost like a square root, that when I want to undo a square root, I square something. Or if I want to undo something that's squared, I square root it. So if I want to undo this tangent, to undo the tangent, if you look at your calculator, where it says tangent, if you hit second and then the tangent button, it pulls up this tan to the power of negative 1. That's called an inverse trig ratio. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that tangent negative 1 on both sides. And what that does here is it sort of cancels out the tangent. And on this side, we're going to do 4 over 6. So we're going to do inverse tangent of 4 over 6. And that will tell us what angle F is. Um, so again, on our calculator, inverse tangent. And then just type in 4 divided by 6. And when we hit enter, we get about 33.7. So that's the measure of angle F. So the measure, whoops, measure of angle F equals about 33.7. So here's another example where we're solving for an angle. So we're solving for angle P. So angle P, we have opposite, we have adjacent, we have hypotenuse. So here we're dealing with adjacent and hypotenuse, which is cosine. So we will say cosine of angle P is equal to adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So remember, to undo this cosine, we're now going to do cosine inverse. 
and then just put the fraction right inside there. And so on our calculator, we'll do cosine inverse of, I believe it was 13 over 19. Let me double check, I forgot. Yep, 13 over 19. 13 divided by 19. And that gives us the measure of angle P. So about 46.8. So we would say the measure of angle P equals 46.8 degrees. All right, the next two problems are yours to try on your own using that trig ratio. Notice in both problems you are solving for side length, so you shouldn't have to use that inverse trig anywhere because you're not solving for any angles. Alrighty, thank you for watching. I know it, and now you know it.